Hi, welcome to SBR TV. I'm Peter Loshak. The 2011 football season is just about to get underway, and there have, of course, been some upheavals in the offshore industry over the summer, more long-term consequences of the UIGEA that has left American players with some questions regarding the current state of the online sports betting industry. And to help sort some of that stuff out, we will be joined once again at SBR TV by one of the leading legal experts in the world on international gambling law, Professor I. Nelson Rose, who's done a few very illuminating calls with us in the past. Professor Rhodes has a website called gamblingandthelaw.com, which is one of the absolute best online resources in the world for information on gambling law. And it's also where you can sign up for his email blog, which is a highly recommended read to anyone with an interest in the subject of international gambling law. Again, the website is gamblingandthelaw.com. Professor Rhodes, thanks for being here again. Well, thank you again for inviting me and that very warm uh, uh, introduction. <laughs> oh, well, no, I mean, it's absolutely true. I mean, people just hang on your every word because there is a lot of confusion. You know, every time some kind of a, a book goes out of, um, a book gets shut down to the United States or the United States Department of Justice takes some action, everyone is trying to make heads or tails of it. And you're the, the, the best one they can think of to turn to. So uh, tell us before we uh, start you know, asking. Sir, no, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, there is so much misinformation out there. Right. Exactly. Um, I just I just did an article. I went. Somebody turned me on to the FBI's website, <laughs> and they've got a whole page devoted to uh, trying to make people afraid, right. to saying that it's illegal to make bets, but it isn't. Not, <laughs> not at least not under federal law. <laughs> it's actually funny you said that because uh, two of the questions that I have here are, is it illegal to make a bet? So we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> but before we get to the specific questions that people asked, um, just tell me, uh, do you have any thoughts about anything that's gone down recently? What are your thoughts on the state of the, um, in, of the uh, online gambling industry right now, specifically as it pertains to sports betting in the United States? Any thoughts you have? Well, uh, it's interesting that the, the UIGEA really did not do what people think it did. They, a lot of people say, oh, this clearly made Internet gambling illegal. And it really didn't change anything. It's an enforcement act. Right. But just to, uh, you know, from the perspective of a player, uh, the UIGEA, from our perspective, seems like it absolutely yeah. did what it was intended to do. It was intended to sort of, you know, destroy the industry, uh, you know, prevent people in the United States from being able to easily bet online. From the player's perspective, it pretty much has achieved what it seems like it, it set out to achieve, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah. Yeah, that, I, was get, I was getting to that point, which oh, okay. is the amazing Good. thing was it really didn't do, uh, it didn't have the legal impact it was supposed to have. And there were very few prosecutions, nothing happened, except uh, immediately it scared out all the publicly traded companies from doing business in the U.S., from taking right. debts from Americans. But then the Black Friday, April 15th of this year, when they uh, filed criminal charges against the three biggest companies that were still taking money poker bets from the U.S., that uh, was like the final nail in, or, or the final threat. Right. Uh, and now all these operators are pulling out. The reality is once you stop taking bets from the U.S., then the federal prosecutors lose interest in you. They don't care if you used to be violating the law. Um, all right. So, well, I mean, let's just talk about what you brought up there, which is operators shutting down or, or shutting down to the U.S. market yeah. as a response to Black Friday, because, uh, you know, Bet Jamaica shut down and, and the Greek pulled out of the U.S. market, but they weren't, from all reports, and I spoke to a, a bunch of people on the inside, they weren't being pressured or being contacted by the U.S. authorities at all. It was much right. more their own decision as a response to Black Friday, though. I was told that like Black Friday is really what scared them. So what's your take on, on those actions? I mean, do you think that it was irrational, unnecessary? There was no reason for Bet Jamaica to shut down? Well, I, my impression is exactly the same as yours, right. that... Um, First of all, the UIGEA was passed. It was misread by uh, some people in very important positions, but the Department of Justice is running a war of intimidation. The operators are afraid, well, maybe their dot-com names can be seized, maybe their bank accounts, even in Europe, South America, uh, Asia could get seized, and they're just thinking, all right, it's better to leave the market. 
All right, so, so let's move on to a, a couple of these um, specific questions that people have asked, and this sort of touches on what we were just talking about. Um, so, so it seems like you know, the U.S. can come in and just take any dot-com site that they want to, but they can't seize non-dot-com sites. So here's a question the guy asks, is the seizure of non-dot-com websites under the jurisdiction of the U.S. government? Well, in fact, they, they shouldn't be able to seize any dot-com site right, either. Right, right. Um, <laughs> besides that, it's an extremely scary precedent. I think they, they made a horrible mistake, and um, the next time it's going to be, say, m some Muslim country like Iran is going to say, well, it's against our law mm -hmm. to advertise alcoholic beverages. We're seizing the dot-com sites of the biggest uh, beer and wine uh, retailers and U.S. restaurants that advertise beer and wine. You know, I mean, anybody can do right. anything with that ruling. So are you saying that legally uh, the U.S. doesn't have any more of a right to seize a dot-com site than Iran or any other country? Why, sh why should it? I don't know. That's what we're asking you. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that what happened is they went to a judge, and the judge issued an order uh, granting the right to seize it. So uh, uh, the government of Iran... Uh, could go to one of its local courts, get an order that it's got the right to seize, um, I don't know, you know, uh, uh, what's the biggest winery or a uh, Budweiser beer, hmm. Anheuser-Busch, and just seize its dot-com name. Certainly, if they then have to go into another country and get a court in that other country to agree that they can seize the worldwide use of a name, uh, they know they're not going to get that. Right. So, so, so I guess people are a little bit confused as to the mechanics of how these site seizures happen, because all they know is they wake up one morning and they go to, you know, whatever, bookmaker.com, and it says this site, they see the big thing, it says this site has yeah. been seized by the U.S. government. So, I mean, how does that happen? The U.S. government goes and they get approved by a court to seize it, and then they go to... Right. The U.S. attorneys, uh, the U.S. attorneys are all very independent. Mm -hmm. Usually when it's something this big, they will coordinate with Washington, D.C. Uh, in this particular case, the, well, the first one that came out of uh, the Southern District of New York, they asked the Attorney General and, about it, and he said he was informed of it, which is a very careful answer, <laughs> meaning they told him he was gonna do, they were going to do this, but they didn't ask for his approval. Then the second time they seized, um, there was a, you know, a U.S. attorney in Maryland that was completely on his own, and there's no indication he even told the Department of Justice he was going to do it. They can sometimes on their own do this, simply send a letter. Like, right. like uh, the amazing thing happened a few years ago when the U.S. attorney sent letters to banks saying, hey, there's money from illegal gambling, and the bank said, oh, okay, here it is, and turned over $30 million. Uh, but normally what they do is they go on a, uh, it's called ex parte, meaning there's no hearing, there's nobody representing the other side. They simply file affidavits under oath saying this is, this illegal activity is going on and they ask the judge for an order giving them the right to seize it. And now you've got a judge's order and if that can be executed in the United States, everybody has to obey it. Hmm. Or, you, or you go to jail, you're in contempt of court. So then why does that not work then for .eus and .ags? Well, how are you going to physically, um, the, the, it, it, you need to be able to execute it. So if it is um, physically in the U.S., it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. If it's .eu, <clears throat> they're, they're going to have to get some court in Europe to go along with it. And that's a lot, much more difficult process. So, so why then does the uh, United States government go after these sites when they know that someone can just get a .eu site and, and, and reach all their same customers? Well, they haven't done it very much, right? right. I mean, this is a new thing they've mm -hmm. done, and I don't think they're going to do it anymore uh, because it was such a, a, a horrible public relations <laughs> disaster. Remember, they got hit with flack from all over the world that they were seizing the name of activities that were perfectly legal in other countries. I mean, they really shouldn't be doing that. Right. Besides opening it, this up to, you know, crazy Islamic fundamentalists saying, well, we're going to seize uh, the names of everybody who does anything we don't like. Right. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of horrible things 
so I don't think they're going to be doing this a lot. And, uh, and I don't think they thought it through. <laughs> I don't think they said, oh, well, the dot-com names are going to switch to .eu. Remember, they're doing a war of intimidation. So right, the, right. the idea is we're going to scare people, and we don't really worry about what the next step is. That might be the first time the U.S. government has not thought something through, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yeah, they usually think things so thoroughly through. 